discussed in this essay. Stalingrad, by Vasily Grossman. Translated by Robert Chandler and Elizabeth Chandler. New York Review Books. 1,088 pages. $27.95. Vasily Grossman and the Soviet Century, by Alexandra Popov. Yale University Press. 424 pages. $32.50. Life and Fate, by Vasily Grossman. Translated by Robert Chandler. New York Review Books. 904 pages. $24.95. An Armenian Sketchbook, by Vasily Grossman. Translated by Robert Chandler and Elizabeth Chandler. New York Review Books. 160 pages. $14.95. Vasily Grossman, left, at the Brandenburg Gate, Berlin, 1945, courtesy Fedor Guber. The Soviet Union, it must be remembered, was a regime founded by freelance writers and editors. In other words, a nightmare. Pamphleteers, autodidactic theoreticians, critics, publishers of small journals, hot take artists, takedown artists and failed poets who'd reinvented themselves as labor organizers, fractious and at constant tour with one another, literary people through and through. If we imagine the early Soviet Union as a hierarchical publishing company, a magazine or new media outfit like the New Republic or BuzzFeed, Lenin was the founder and publisher, Trotsky was the deputy editor, and Stalin was the seemingly humble managing editor. As anyone who has worked in publishing knows, the managing editor is the hardest worker. They make sure the deadlines are met and the trains run on time. They are, above all, reliable. This particular managing editor takes no vacations, never leaves town. He lives for the work, strives to appear to be the mere executor of the will of the publisher and the company. When the publisher becomes very sick, it is the managing editor who visits him at home to cheer him up with jokes and receive his instructions. By bringing the boss's instructions back to the office from on high, he leverages this personal relationship and increases his authority within the organization. It's not hard to see how Stalin's ascent within the Bolshevik hierarchy happened. We've all seen this person before. When the publisher dies, no one suspects the managing editor of harboring ambitions to take over. But really, who better understands the day-to-day -day functioning of the organization, who better to be in charge? Stalin was a consummate editor. He seemed to understand that the role was to sublimate ego in order to shape the world quietly in the background. Good editors know how to render themselves invisible. Stalin's blue pencil, unlike that of other editors, glided across not just poetry chapbooks and literary journals but life itself.